This is English shorthand dictation number 228 and the dictation speed is 160 volts per minute. Ready? Start. Mr. Chairman, Sir, I thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. The debate on the compulsory voting bill could not be concluded last time and it was two years back. Now I have to continue my remaining speech on this bill. Sir, we know that India is a democratic country and our democracy is mature. That is why way back in 1950, we included fundamental rights in our constitution. So, if we see the constitution of India, Article 19 provides for freedom of speech and expression. The word expression means it is a right to express or not to express. So, if we enforce compulsory voting, then it goes against the mandate of Article 19 of the Constitution of India, which specifically provides that it is within the sweet will of the individual and the right to vote or not to vote is a fundamental right of the citizen. At the same time, if we see Article 21 of the Constitution of India, it says that no person shall be deprived of his life and liberty except in accordance with the law. When we see the word liberty, it includes the right to vote and not to vote. It includes both. So it cannot be enforced in view of the mandate of fundamental rights which have been provided under Articles 19 and 21 of the Constitution. If such a law is enacted, then it will not withstand the tide of judicial scrutiny before the court of law. Sir, if we see Article 326 of the Constitution of India, it is provided that any citizen can register himself as a voter. He has a right to register himself as a voter, but it is not a duty to register himself as a voter. No duty has been cast under Article 326 of the Constitution. It is an option available to every citizen of India. He can either register himself as a voter or he need not register himself as a voter. Therefore, in my view, this bill basically cannot withstand the tide of judicial scrutiny and such a law cannot be enacted by the Parliament. So, at the most, if we want to increase the percentage of voting, then Certain incentives may be provided by the government by making a provision under various schemes like PDS and so on. But if a citizen has not cast his vote, he cannot be denied these facilities on that count. So such a law cannot be enacted. We can only persuade the voters and such type of persuasion is possible by providing political education. Apart from this, we can do one more thing. In rural and urban areas, we are applying the same yardstick. The election commission is required to see to it. In the urban areas where the distance from the polling booth is less, the polling booth should be installed on the basis of the number of voters. Normally, in one polling booth, around 1,000 voters are there. So, the same yardstick cannot be applied with respect to the rural areas where the people are living in small settlements and where the distance from polling booth is sometimes 10 kilometers. They are poor people. They do not have proper communication. They do not have transport system in the rural areas. Therefore, the election commission is required to see to it that at least in the rural areas, we must have more polling booths. Here, I would like to make a suggestion. Suppose in one Lok Sabha constituency, the number of polling booths is 2,500 and instead of doing anything more, if they increase the number of booths to four times, then nothing more is required. Automatically, the percentage of voting would increase. Only due to lack of communication and lack of transport, the voting percentage is very poor. This is the main reason for low voting percentage. Nowadays, voting percentage has increased. Due to political education, it has increased to 60% or sometimes even to 70%. 
so even in the rural areas where there is a particular concentration then in that particular booth we see a good percentage of voting but where people are living in small settlements and the polling booth is not easily accessible the percentage of voting is very poor secondly if you want to see transparency in the electoral process then more polling booths will be required otherwise the candidate on the basis of his money power can provide more vehicles and fetch more votes therefore in the rural areas the number of polling booths should be increased the distance from the polling booths should not be more than 2 kilometers so that every voter can exercise his right to franchise so this modality can be adopted and this reform can be introduced by the election commission sir this issue has also arisen a number of times before the supreme court the same issue also came up before this august house with respect to the compulsory voting this matter went before the gujarat high court and even before the supreme court the matter was agitated there and it was finally decided that the right to vote cannot be converted into the duty to vote there is a difference once it is done it would contravene the mandate of articles 19 and 21 of the constitution of india sir we are a democratic country and in my view such types of rights cannot be enforced so this bill cannot be passed by this house apart from this when this bill came up before the parliament in 1950 this issue was debated and even dr ambedkar opposed it and said that compulsory voting cannot be introduced in the representation of the people act so it was rejected by the parliament on the grounds that there are so many practical difficulties and so it cannot be implemented thereafter in 1990 the goswami committee was constituted and it also rejected the idea of compulsory voting again in 2001 the national commission to review the working of the constitution was constituted this commission also rejected the move of compulsory voting later another committee was constituted and it also opined that no compulsory voting can be permissible and it cannot be implemented the committee also said that there are so many any practical difficulties in implementation of compulsory voting and it can only be done by way of persuasion as well as by political education similarly in 2004 one honorable member of lok sabha moved the bill on compulsory voting in 2009 also one honorable member of lok sabha moved the bill on the same subject it was discussed and debated in the parliament and finally it was withdrawn this issue was raised before the supreme court also in 2009 and it was dismissed by the supreme court recently in gujarat for the election of local bodies this bill was assented to by the governor of gujarat but finally it was decided by the gujarat high court that such type of a law cannot be enforced because compulsory voting is not possible it is only a right and it cannot be converted into duty it goes against the mandate of the fundamental rights enshrined under articles 19 and 21 of the constitution of india so far as the duties under article 51 are concerned even that duty is not there as far as the directive principles of the state policy are concerned sir i have already made my submission extensively on the last occasion now i request other honorable members to speak because this opportunity should also be given to other members honorable speaker sir i rise to support this bill sir in our country the voting percentage is coming down after each election our literacy rate has gone up our educational facilities have also improved so we are among those countries which have the largest number of literate populations but the voting percentage is falling whether it is local bodies elections state assembly elections or lok sabha elections kerala has 100% literacy even in kerala in the local bodies elections we get 85% of voting in the state assembly elections we get 75% voting the percentage of voting for lok sabha elections is even lower than this sir this is not a healthy sign for the growth of our democracy why is the voting percentage coming down in northern parts of india and other parts we have 45 to 55% and at the most we have 
सिक्सटी परसेंट वोटिंग इज इट ए फैक्ट दैट पीपुल आर लूजिंग देयर फेथ इन आवर पॉलिटिकल सिस्टम देयर आर इंक्रीजिंग इंस्टेंसेज ऑफ करप्शन फेवरेटिज्म एंड ग्रोइंग कम्युनलाइजेशन एंड कास्ट डिवाइड इन आवर पॉलिटिकल सेटअप इट हैज अफेक्टेड द क्वालिटी ऑफ आवर बॉडी पॉलिटिक सर पीपुल इन मैनी पार्ट ऑफ आवर कंट्री डू नॉट हैव फेथ इन देयर रिप्रेजेंटेटिव पीपुल फील दैट पॉलिटिक्स इज फॉर द पर्सनल गेन ऑफ द इलेक्टेड रिप्रेजेंटेटिव फॉर देयर पार्टीज एंड फॉर देयर families so the society does not have faith in our politicians in other words people are moving away from the political system so the political parties should reset their political agenda to bring back the public interest corruption must be wiped out from our society people should be made to feel that political and constitutional institutions belong to them